to this episode of our program, um, Arab Affairs. As usual, we are discussing an Arab Affairs. Today, we will not be discussing a file in its own, but rather a phenomenon, terrorism. Terrorism is really hitting the whole area, the Middle East, at large. We're speaking here about a phenomenon that has become a real persistent threat to the existence of the Middle East. It's not anymore um, a threat uh, to one country or another, but rather a phenomenon. We're not speaking about a threat to the Middle East, but rather a threat to the world, to the whole world. If we are speaking about terrorism, then we have to make a kind of linkage between terrorism in an area and another in another area. And if we track both sides, we will see a kind of relevance. This is exactly what we are going to speak about. Terrorism had hitting the Middle East and on track to be a persistent uh, world threat. This is exactly what we are going to speak about today in our episode. Before we start with our discussion, let's first have a quick look on the developments in the Middle East and come back from discussion. <laughs> President Abdel Fattah Hassan met with a visiting American delegation, former top officials including Stephen Rubin, former American National Security Advisor, and Wendy Chamberlain, the head of the American Institute for the Middle East Research. Presidential spokesman Ali Yusuf said that the visitor stressed the role of Egypt is playing in the region, adding that they are eager to strengthen American Egyptian cause. The American delegation added that they were transferred to the American administration as of jet fighters from barrage targets hitting training camps of the terrorist group as well as weapons and ammunition warehouses. Meanwhile, 66 people, including 12 children, were killed by regime airstrikes and shelling in rebel areas around Damascus on Thursday. The assault in the eastern Malta region came after rebels fired more than 100 rockets at the city, killing 10 people, including a child. Tunisian parliament on Thursday approved the coalition government led by secular Nidea Tunis party and including moderate rivals in number following landmark elections in the birthplace of the Arab Spring. Of 204 lawmakers present, the vote was a comfortable 166 to 30 with 8 abstentions. Tunisian Prime Minister Habib said the government is the first to be formed after the North African country's first free election and parliamentary elections last year. Yemeni faction held UN broker talks late on Thursday to try the fall of power vacuum left by the president and premier hoping to resign last month as Shiite militia maintained their grip on the capital. Representatives of the two political parties gathered around UN envoy Gamal bin Omar a day after a deadline set by the Houthi militia who forced the president's resignation expired. The Houthi said a three-day deadline on Sunday for the parties to resolve the power vacuum created by President Abdullah bin Mansour Hadi and Prime Minister Khalid al Bahah offered to quit last month. A senior Libyan official said that Daesh militant group is gaining ground in Libya and a new international approach is needed to address the growing threat. Arif Ali Mayhid, Libya's ambassador to the United Arab Emirates and an advisor to Prime Minister Abdullah Athani was in Washington and New York this week to discuss the new challenges on Libya's security fronts. The United Nations has blacklisted one of Libya's militant groups on Saudi Sharia for its ties to Daesh, but Mayhid it said that the militias are adept and rebranding to maintain and expand their links with Daesh. Welcome back and we're 
speaking about terrorism as a set of resistant threat to the Middle East, and what is a generational struggle for power in the end. But the parties involved and the phenomenon itself, the grassroots of this threat, where to start from, this is exactly our discussion today. We have with us for discussion uh, Mr. Ibn Mawala, who is political analyst. Thank you very much for being us. Thank you. And let me start with the phenomenon itself. And from your point of view, do you think it clearly has just started, it started with Al-Qaeda? When did exactly it start? This is a actual um, uh, trend uh, in the sense that uh, we have to admit that during the past two centuries or three centuries, this region was uh, exploited by uh, Western powers uh, from the 17 and 1800s France and Britain tried to uh, gain uh, access to the region and also to the rest of Africa to get the riches of uh, this region and uh, manipulate it. Uh, and uh, as a result, uh, we have to uh, also go a little bit forward in the beginning of the last century uh, when uh, uh, Jewish immigration started to go to Palestine and uh, Arabs and Muslims started to feel uh, the, the pressure and that they are being really uh, invaded from all sides, uh, whether by colonization in, in, in several countries or uh, through the displacement of a whole nation such as what happened in Palestine, now Israel. Uh, so, uh, uh, in, in the beginning of the last century, it was a fall of the Ottoman Empire, and the Muslim Brotherhood organization started in Egypt in 1928 with the purpose or the mission is to re erect this Islamist uh, state. Now, over the years, I think uh, this, these movements started to uh, gain some credibility because of uh, a major failure of the world order. Uh, major failure of the world order. Uh, international justice for the United Nations to uh, restore the rights, for example, for the Palestinian people or of any uh, Arab or Muslim uh, injustices to help them regain their rights. Uh, uh, with the failure in the sense of the parity of uh, the rich and poor from the north and the south, uh, the exploitation of oil, the exploitation of the resources of, of this region, all of this uh, uh, failures together uh, led to uh, some people trying to immigrate. Uh, you know, when you are so depressed and frustrated, you try to immigrate to some to some other area. And one of these immigrations was a time immigration. So many people started to say, yes, we have to go back to the time of you know the ancestors or the prophets or whatever you know to mm -hmm. try to regain the glory of Islam and, and so on and, and, and try to find refuge in, in that kind of. Uh, it, it is a kind of a, a, a mental state which. It started to spread uh, in the region. And finally, of course, the sectarian politics itself. The sectarian politics meaning that uh, these world powers started to use these extremist movements to achieve their own political gains. For example, in Afghanistan, started to arm the Mujahideen and help them uh, recruit even from Egypt and other areas to uh, and arm them to uh, fight the Soviets. So it was a part of the Cold War also. Here in Egypt, to remember in the 70s, uh, uh, the Sadat used uh, some of these extremist groups to try to counter balance nationalist and socialist and of course uh, at the end they realized uh, this problem and he was unfortunately assassinated uh, on their hands. So a big political use of this sectarian politics and, and these extremist organizations also empowered them, empowered them with harm, empowered them with money to form businesses and buy alliances and, and infiltrate. Finally of course we have to realize also that they managed to infiltrate uh, our conscious in the sense of uh, they started to change uh, particular uh, uh, the various educational system started to control uh, wide media influence uh, through the many extremist uh, anti uh, channels which you know, spread in the last 15 years in various parts of the Arab Muslim world. Uh, they 
ministry started to control uh, uh, Al Azhar, for example, and many of the mosques, uh, it's enough to know, for example, that the Taliban itself it means the students, and it's uh, uh, it's a result of a very extremist uh, religious uh, indoctrination in, in, in many of the uh, sometimes school-owned or state-owned schools. Uh, like, for example, what happened here in Azhar. Many of these Azhar institutions they were Azhar by name only, but they were in fact run and managed by extremist organizations and used to indoctrinate uh, people and to recruit uh, young people and so on. So, the, 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 the whole, uh, to summarize what we have just said, the, 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 the whole problem starts with, in fact, injustice inflicted by the West, uh, Western powers on this region and failure of world order and then use of uh, sectarian politics, use of, of these extremist groups to achieve political gains. But, Mr. Nawar can be very weak. Um, terrorism to a religion meaning we have seen in the past centuries and the middle um, centuries for instance we have seen the crusade wars and it was launched in the name of god and in the name of uh, of um, christianity and um, that uh, uh, christianity orders them to uh, go and into war and get the benefit of those wars for the sake of the sacred lands and all this stuff. Now we are seeing religion turning or, 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 or this phenomena being named after Islam. We're not speaking that uh, Christianity, real Christianity had to do with that war at that time. We're not speaking that Islam, real Islam has to do with that war. But can we really link the phenomena to religion? We have seen, um, that, as you said, um, throughout the, the past centuries, uh, in fact, uh, from maybe the time of uh, the Roman Empire, remember the Roman Empire uh, used Christianity in the beginning, it was fighting Christianity, and then the Roman Empire decided to forbid for politically to adopt that religion, so it adopted a certain version of that religion, so it in fact it kind of canonized some of the Bibles and threw away some of the other Bibles and so on, and started to enforce the religion. In, 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 in various territories, and there was a, uh, an Egyptian, uh, an accent here in Egypt, uh, a scientist, a philosopher called Bathia, and, and she lived in Alexandria, she was teaching mathematics and sciences and so on, and in fact she was assassinated by an extremist uh, Christian mob in uh, 415 AD. Uh, going a little bit forward, you remember the middle, uh, middle Ages when we had these inquisitions, I and mean, actually the, the inquisition of continued almost until the 1800s. So there was a bit under the name of, of, of a religion and a lot of people were uh, burned on the stick, uh, burned on the cross. Uh, thousands, we're talking thousands and thousands of people. Uh, just uh, before that, as you also mentioned, there was a crusade which uh, resulted in uh, huge suffering and, and thousands and thousands of deaths uh, for tens and maybe even centuries. And uh, I suspect that the reason is in order to motivate people to give the highest sacrifice, which is sacrifice of life, that you leave your home, you take arms, and you 